Addressing the Effects of Broad Antibiotics on Mutualistic Bacteria by Taryn Sager, Christina Sanchez, and Lydia Kim. In the sense of broad spectrum anti uh, antibiotics eliminating both mutualistic bacteria and pathogens, which cause disruptions in the microbiome and dysbiosis, what can our type pyosins do to address these challenges? The following terms will be brought up several times throughout the presentation. Our type pyosin is a bacteriophage with contractile bodies that comes from Pseud Pseudomonas aeruginosa bacterial strains, while a broad antibiotic is an antibiotic that acts upon a wide range of pathogenic bacteria, and the technical good bacteria are bacteria that, involve, that are involved in a mutualistic relationship with the host, with an example being gut bacteria. And finally, dysbiosis, which is an illness in which there is an unbalanced amount of harmless bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract. Our abstract. So today we'll be talking about our type um, bacteriophages. So essentially, eh, essentially the problem is that broad spectrum antibiotics are targeting all types of bacteria, including good, and we don't want that. So to combat this, precision antibiotics were created to target specific uh, bad bacteria, and our type pyosin is one of those. <sighs> But its killing range is like really limited to only a few types of uh, bacteria. So what we want to do is expand that killing range, but still keep it contained within that realm of killing only bad bacteria and not the good. And we can do this by swapping out or fusing tail fibers of the um, the tail fiber of the pyosin with tail fibers of other um, phages. And what this does is that it's, it changes the bactericidal specificity of the R-type pyosin to that of the phage that it, phage that it swapped tails with. So the concept slash topic. There are two sort of topics that we'll be mentioning today. First is the R-type pyosin, and next will be the scanning electron microscope. So for the R-type pyosin, if you see in the picture um, part A and part B, Part A is a, is a scanning electron microscopy image of the R2 pyosin, which is negatively stained with phosph phosphatungistic acid. And part B is a diagram showing the major structures and parts of it. And in the scanning electron microscope, that image is just a diagram showing the parts and just labeling it. Precedence. Precedence. In this day of age, broad spectrum antibiotics are used as the last resort for bacterial infections. However, the effects of taking these broad spectrum antibiotics include antibiotic resistance and C. difficile infections in the colon, both of which are deadly. Pyosinase are, are, was the first antibiotic prescribed in hospitals. And just like R type pyosins, pyosinase was also derived from P. arginza, which, um, which was used. And but there, um, but consequently, it was toxic and taken down. Discussion: The first R-type pyosin was discovered in 1964 by Kagiyama from the Pseudomonas aeruginosa strain. It's a bacterial strain, and the um, R-type pyosin has a rod-like structure with a double hollow cylinder and six tail fibers. What I mean by the double hollow cylinder is that it has a sheath and a core, and the sheath is contractible so that the core can penetrate the bacterial membrane to kill the bacteria. It also has a single hit mechanism, and it can kill a bacteria with a single hit. And finally, the pyosin R1 and the T-even phage tail have been proven to have close morphological resemblance, and the T-even phage is also known as the E. coli phage. Contributions. The R-type pyosins have proven to be effective in um, killing harmful bacterial cells, and to support this, we have a, a supporting piece of evidence. In many cases, a single R-type bacteriosin is sufficient to kill a bacterial cell, and their specificity to target only harmful bacteria um, helps address the issue of the broad spectrum antibiotics killing the good ones. And to back this up, although P. Argino Ar Arginosa, our type pyosins, kill mainly strains of P. Arginosa, they also have been shown to kill some strains of um, Haemophilus, Nyrissa, and Campylobacter species. Limitations. Our type pyosins are a one-time use, and after each in infection, the patient would have to receive uh, a new dose. 
Broad antibiotics kill good and bad bacteria, while our types kill specific bacteria, yet their kill is limited to the specific pathogens as mentioned beforehand. Um, this is good in a sense that they killed the specific bacteria, but we would like to see them. Uh, we would like to see our type uh, pyosins kill more. Um, this was not enough. <coughs> Unfortunately, there is no study in which a large number of pathogenic bacteria is killed with the good without the good bacteria being altered. Our type pyosins are only uh, are injected and can only be operated if the infected area is known. A solution would be to essentially create a more precise version of a spread antibiotic, an antibiotic that won't attack the palpa bacteria but that settled within the body but attack a larger range of um, negative bacteria. We could, oh, oh. And <laughs> we, we could use electron microscopes as well in order to give a more visual representation to check, uh, to see the damage it would cost towards the good and bad bacteri bacterial cells. By replacing the piacin tail fibers with tail fibers of Pseudomonas phage PS17, we changed the bacter bactericidal specificity of ART2 piacin particles to a different subset of P. arginosa strains, including some resistant to PS17 phage. We read we further extended this idea by fusing parts of R2 tail fibers with parts of tail fibers from phages that infect another bacteria, including E. coli and Yersinia pestis, and ch changing the killing spectrum of pyosins from P. arginosa to the bacterial genus, species, or strain that serves as a host for the donor phage. After finding a compatible, uh, a compatible phage for the R-type phyosin, that will, that will fuse or replace a tail, we could put it into the, uh, a lab testing, which we would apply it to, um, which where we would apply the R-types to uh, good and bad bacterial cells through a, through a uh, selection of wells in order to test like efficiently on how badly or how well it affects the cells. So after doing the lab, we can use electron microscopy to image the types of bacteria that the reprogrammed R-type pyosin attacked. So we could use scanning electron microscopes or transmission electron microscopes. And from the images, we can track the progress of the bacteriophage and see the damage it caused to the bad bacteria and see what needs, what needs to be changed. If it attacked the good bacteria, we obviously, uh, we, the tail fiber that is implemented in it is obviously not working out. So from the images, we can um, just only improve from that. Thank you for your time. Any questions? So I, I definitely understood your goal of trying to expand the, the breadth of the targeting range. So, but it's unclear exactly how far. Are you trying to target it from like one species to three different ones? Are you trying to, you know, find multiple mechanisms that can uh, broaden, you know, m multiple different proteins and assess how they all affect a broadened, uh, you know, set of bacteria? Or are you trying to specifically uh, uh, switch the bacterial types, like to show that you can move it from one bacteria to a specifically bad bacterium that you have in mind? So we're trying to broaden the range between the bacterial species um, that they can use, and by finding um, by finding one of the tail fibers that would work for all of them, but in only killing the uh, bad bacteria, and we can fuse more than one tail fiber, so we can just find the specific per uh, multiple disease, hopefully more than ten at a time, and we would fuse them to create a basically a super R type pyosin. Oh, to add on to that. Um, essentially, our prog uh, process would be with our type um, py piacin, they have tail fibers, and we can only switch the tail fibers of the R type piacin with another phage. Um, so, and uh, we had a study that Christina read where scientists were actually able to switch the tail fibers of another 
phage with the R-type pyosin. And what that phage was able to infect the R-type pyosin when it was switched, when the tail fibers were switched, they were also able to infect um, that bacteria. So I guess uh, our, goal, our main goal is to expand the specificity that the R-type can um, infect. And I guess our way of like handpicking which specific bacteria would be infected by the R-type pyosin is just our method of doing so. So <clears throat> you saw from Professor Miller's talk, right, that a cryoelectron microscopy was used in this case to understand the mechanism of action of these pyosins, that contractile nanotube functionality, right? I guess my question here is, is what do you hope to gain from electron microscopy specifically and why you chose electron microscopy as opposed to an optical method? If your interest is to understand if these modified piacins are killing cells, right? If they're if they're being effective in your goal, right? Like, what is it about EM that you would learn? Because we know the mechanism of action and we know the structure, right? But EM is not giving you time course data. It doesn't give you a lot of information about whether cells are alive or dead, because they're already dead because they're frozen, right? Like what, what's the motivation for EM versus looking at optics, for example? I guess the reason we chose EM would be that um, we did see that EM was able to identify the bacteria, the parts of the bacteria and the interior of it. And that was just what stood out to us, that we could see um, more on the inside of the bacteria and what um, happened along with it. And it's also know that EM has a very, very high like resolution that we can use to have a greater magnified view of the bacteria. That's just what was like the defining point that we chose EM. We would want to see closer and how in depth and see the different changes and how much affects each bacteria. What's your plan if the bacteria you're targeting develops resistance to piosin? If, uh, oh, okay. So um, we had a study that um, where our type piosin, um, we can constantly be switching out tails that will be able to target the or. Okay, sorry. What makes this? What makes like our type piosin like the switching tail fibers unique is that. It has a combination of that phage that it switched with along with the R-type piacin strength. And so that makes like this unique combination of killing, which um, I don't believe that bacteria will grow to be immune to that quickly. But if they do, there is that possibility of constantly switching out tail fibers so that there is uh, more diversity and less susceptibility to, be, um, to grow immune to it. So is this technique limited by the number of phage tail fibers available? Uh, technically, yes. But it also depends, it, yeah, it depends on how many will react well with the R-type. But it also depends on how many will actually attack the good cells and if it will cause as much damage to the good cells that would be considered fatal. Ladies, good forward thinking on this. Uh, some of the, the unique things I'm thinking about this was that it's actually a good thing to have very narrow coverage. Most of the antimicrobials that we've ever had are always, even that they're called narrow coverage, are actually too broad. So this is extremely narrow. So identifying the bugs that you are trying to a a attack is actually, actually a good thing because it, it potentially uh, um, looks at just one particular bug. My question is, um, how do you know when you when the when the phages switch out? What, what technique did you? It was the electron microscopy the, the way that you knew that there was switch uh, that the, the different phages were switched? Is that how you knew? Um, that was yes, you're correct. That's what we've uh, according to our research. That's how you would be, we were. That's how we would be able to see the different phage types. So that's th that was the reason for choosing the electron microscopy technique rather than an optical technique.
All right. Well, then, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you.